Morning has broken. <laughs> morning has. I was gonna sing, sing Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. as the day begins. Except it's Saturday. Now, I set my alarm for 5 o'clock. Record store day, that's what this is. Record store day, so if you're, depending on when you're watching this, record store day, April 2022. It's been a busy week. It's been Earth Day. It's been 420 day. It's been all the days. So it's Saturday morning. Of course, whenever you set your alarm in, in anticipation, you always wake up early, or at least I do. So I woke up way early. So literally it's five in the morning and I'm already up and out and heading towards uh, Silver Platters and Soto District of Seattle. Now, I don't have to be there that early, but it's, God, it's in the 50s here in the morning. And that's pretty warm in Seattle for right now because it hasn't been that warm. So I'm heading over there. Um, now, Record Store Day, I have a love, I don't have a hate thing for it. I know there's now a lot of backlash and people dumping on Record Store Day, but you know, I would say there's about 20% of the releases on Record Store Day which are uh, really good, and there's about 80% which, from, from my point of view, are crap. All the picture disc crap and all the countless live shows of bands that you don't really give a shit about. Now, having said that, there's always someone that seems to give a shit about it. Um, you know, there's a whole group of people who are jumping in all these jazz limited release releases and you know every record store day now for the last several years there's been Bill Evans this and Bill Evans that in a live show they found in a sock drawer and something they found in the back of a uh, you know glove compartment of a 57 Chevy or something they found these tapes so I'm kind of not going in, into those I don't really care about those anymore those uh, really rare uh, archival things although you know it's not about them not being uh, maybe audiophile, because I don't really care about that. To me, it's a performance that should matter. For instance, a couple years ago, uh, the Palo Alto Monk album. Now, that wasn't Record Store Day, although there was a second edition that was Record Store Day. Fabulous, fabulous release, and I thought that was just justified, and, and just the history of that made it worthwhile, but it was a great recording and a great performance as well. So. Um, obviously, Art Pepper and Mono Craft, I'm interested in. Grateful Dead, of course, London, uh, 72, I'm very interested in. Uh, and Billy Bragg, oh, God, Billy Bragg, Anniversary Edition. So, you know, the jazz things I'm not really jumping in on. There might be a couple, and I may uh, find, uh, I changed my mind. What's good about this since the pandemic, uh, Sewer Platters hands out a list, I think around 7 a.m., and they call you in. And uh, they have a bag full of your uh, records that you chose, if if they're available, uh, by 8 a.m. So, and you're out, and you can go have coffee, breakfast, brunch. If you want to go to another record store and check it out, it's great. But again, what I really like is meeting the people and uh, people in line. So anyone that bitches about record store day, cash grab, you know, it's a it's a it's a great to celebrate music and records with other uh, like minding people so that's how I look at it and you know most of the stuff I agree you can get after the fact online and only very few pieces are overpriced expensive later you can probably find everything here but I'm up it's Saturday morning I want to get out uh, and uh, I'll meet some people so uh, let's see how this day goes and how records are get day goes and by the end of this video I'll showcase what I got so stand by I won't sing anymore, I promise. Why are you here? What are you getting today? What are you interested in? Uh, booze, bruise, and broken and boned. Black Label Society Live. That's it? Gatefold. Well, Motorhead. Allison Chains. I, I wouldn't have guessed that you were in, in, into Motorhead. Allison Chains. Uh, Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper sat back and he. Uh, observed what little brother Marilyn Manson was doing and then about 10 years into it he did a uh, an album response to what Marilyn Manson was doing he called it Brutal Planet and wow. it just kicked 
ass on anything that Marilyn Manson ever did. It was just, it was just wow. Yeah, just. <laughs> so it turned out I was 14, excuse me, 15th in line, and they handed out the list. You could pick as many titles as you want, but only one of each title. That's the way it should be, one per customer. I love it. Um, I didn't go into any of the Bill Evans, and we'll see what happens, and I'll show later what I picked up. And uh, records for day April. It's over almost. Very civilized. So say something. Hey, Mazzy. How you it's doing? Russ, Russ Jones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Russ. Mazzy's channel on the, uh, the YouTube <laughs> Do you want me thing. to? Do you want me to um, send you this? Sure. So you post it too, so we both stick it. Yeah, in there you go. Mine's gonna be like a montagey kind oh, of cool. thing. Oh, cool. There you go. Um, and I, two guys like recognize me here, which is weird. Oh yeah. It's cool. Weird. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, what are you getting? We're you're like your your Seattle record store, Lionel Community yeah. Famous. Yeah, but I still think I'm Sa I'm a San Franciscan at heart. <laughs> Seattle's like that. All that grunge shit that people are into. Oh come on now, we love that stuff. Yeah. yeah. We changed the world. You did. You changed the world in the 1990s. Yeah. 90s. San Francisco, we changed the world in the 60s. 1960. <laughs> some, the summer of love. There you go. Here you have the. Uh, 90s of fog and earthquakes and uh, we had earthquakes too yeah, not yeah. The same every way. single thing it put out <laughs> and angry oh, and angry music but, well, hey, I, do, day, and it sort of I don't know I think it was like an awakening sort of you know like you had in the 80s in the 80s you had uh, it's sort of fluffy maybe surfacy little shallow music and then and then Jeremy comes out right it smells like teen spirit Oh, Jeremy, the, the, the high school <laughs> one. Where the, the, uh, Jeremy. Oh, no, that's, uh, that oh, no. smells like Teen Spirit. No, 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 no. Here we the, are now. The, the Pearl Jam in the classroom video. Oh. From 10. Yeah, yeah. Is that from 10? Okay, yeah, Jeremy. 10? Jeremy. <laughs> Actually, I was in, um, I have a friend who has uh, three cafes in Seattle, <laughs> two in West Seattle. Okay. I was in a cafe. Uh... Uh, real fine coffee. Right, right. Right by uh, Rudy's. No. Dave or? Real f oh, well, Coffee Dave is, is a different... It's yeah. a different guy. <laughs> okay. But Julie, who owns these cafes, I was in there okay. sitting with um, some regulars there that I used to go. I'd work there two days a week. And this guy sits down. He goes, do you mind if I sit here? And they knew him. And I didn't know who it was. And I'm sitting there. And they're talking to him. And he turns out to be a musician. And, and I thought, wait a second. So I'm sitting literally right across the table from him, like three feet away. I open my laptop and I search Pearl Jam and it turns out it's Jeff Amet from uh, the oh, bass wow. player and I just didn't recognize him because I don't know I know I don't know Pearl Jam that well to know him right. he was such a great guy we talked about bass players I talked about um, Yorma um, uh, actually Jeff um, Jack Cassidy from the airplane and Hot Tuna I love his bass playing he was talking to me how we met him and friends so that's my Pearl Jam story. That's awesome. Because they all, a lot of them live. I probably in West, wouldn't recognize them. No, but they live in West Seattle. They go to Easy Streets. They're kind of hometown oh, yeah. record store. Yeah. They, they that play live. Easy Street. They, that, a, I do have that live uh, Pearl Jam at, oh, cool. at um, Easy Street. So, anything else you want to say at all? Uh, no. Like and subscribe. Then. Like and subscribe. Push <laughs> the button. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to be on both. This is like a, a duet. A dual thing. A yeah, dual yeah. thing. Okay. Take care. I want to do. I want to do. Uh, Thank you. Hi, Norman. You found one? Yes. You found one? You're my hero. I would never let Nick cave down. Oh, God. I, and I just saw him. So thank you so much. I don't know. Is that an espresso martini? It is. At 8 a.m.? Why not? Oh, I love it. Saturday. That's right. God, I love it. My liquor license I... says 6 a.m. and I open at 7, so. Wow. I can't handle that today. <laughs> I'm here at the uh, Starbucks Reserve, their uh, world headquarters, Seattle, Washington. Here's my record store day hall. 
We'll see what I keep or what I trade to friends.